-hmm. and so you have you have 15 minutes and uh, as for the other ones when you are approaching the end i will write something on your slides okay thank you um i assume everyone can see my slides as well um, okay, so I'll talk about physics validation in the Atlas experiment. So, yeah, a quick outline uh, of the topics that we wanted to cover. Um, so, we'll start by giving a, a general overview of validation efforts in Atlas with a focus on, on, on yeah, well, physics, physics validation. And I'll speak generally about uh, some challenges um, uh, that we face, for example, about the distinction between physics and, and, and technical. Um, validations and, and then specifically the challenges related to using um, different resources and, and to fully automate uh, this process. So on page three, uh, yeah, so okay, so the, the role of physics validation within Atlas is to check and understand effects from, from changes in both uh, the simulation software, which can be both full and, and uh, simulation and also on uh, the construction software. So uh, we have Different characteristics, as I will talk a bit more about. Um, and in practice, we perform these checks on different physics objects and, uh, that can be tracks or jets or electrons or photons, etc. And, and uh, we compare distributions related to these objects um, and verify that any changes are, are consistent uh, with expectations. And of course, this is um, for defining the expectations and what, what level of consistency we're looking for is, is, is not always straightforward. Um, that's what I'll talk about. On page four, um, just to take a step back, just to point out that there's effectively a, a hierarchy of, of validations in Atlas and that uh, physics validation is not something that is used very regularly. So it's triggered by uh, the major changes to the code uh, at, a, at a later stage of development and that has been already um, through smaller scale uh, validations in some way. So yeah, so obviously any unwanted effects uh, would, would um, most of them uh, show up by preceding steps shown here. So first of all, continuous integration, which can check an order of uh, 10 of events, and that can be useful for testing identical outputs. Um, for example, for, for, example, for um, from code restructuring or reconfiguration. Then there's the Atlas release tester, um, which can check a factor of uh, 10 more events, and that's uh, Think run usually once or twice a week and allows to check distribution with more statistical precision. It's therefore good to catch uh, unwanted and less frequent, uh, less frequent effects uh, as well as some expected changes. And then finally, physics validation, uh, which we run usually on uh, order of um, 100,000 events uh, for different physics processes. So obviously providing much higher statistical precision and um, an overview really of the effects of the developments. Um, so it's, it's, it's much more statistics uh, than the other two and then therefore it's ideal for comparing distributions and looking for dramatic trends. So, um, so yes, this is typically run as I said before, whenever we want to evaluate um, or benchmark the effect of a major uh, development, um, for example, before a reprocessing of the Monte Carlo um, data for reconstruction and then we can check the effects that it has on each physics object um, definition. Um, and in some cases, uh, it, 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 it's also run with the actual physics analysis workflows. Um, I'll talk about that again, but the goal here is to, to catch uh, effects that um, impact specific objects in regions of phase space that may not be covered by, by all the pieces in the text. Okay, so on page five, uh, just a very, a quick uh, description of the typical workflow, uh, generally speaking. So I mentioned earlier, um, this is usually triggered by a major update or updates to simulation or reconstruction uh, in some development branch. And then we have a collection of, of Monte Carlo samples of different physics processes that are produced. Um, we sometimes run this today as well. But uh, yeah, so for, the, for Monte Carlo, this covers several uh, standard model and exotics processes to test uh, all aspects of the object reconstruction or as many as, as we can. Um, so the samples are run on the grid via uh, our central production system and configured via the Atlas um, metadata interface. Um, so there are different steps of this chain according to what we are validating. Uh, typically we go from, from generator level uh, to simulation, digitization, and reconstruction. Uh, so, so this does not target uh, any uh, 
uh, generational level uh, validation. So we either start from a common set of uh, uh, generation level um, samples if you want to validate simulation, or we start from simulated samples for, for later uh, validations for the validation of later steps. Um, yes, yeah, so the output is typically a collection of variables that can help us um, verify the quality of uh, object reconstruction. Um, sometimes, as I said, extended to physics analysis. So um, we have an output of histograms typically or, or efficiency plots, and we do have a common framework uh, to produce comparisons um, and some measure of, of agreement of the category bias. Uh, uh, I don't know, Ines, your sound is not always very good, sometimes becoming very weak. Maybe you should be a little bit closer to your macro. Uh, yeah, I can try. Is this better? Yeah, continue. Go on. Um, so yeah, so of course this uh, requires a stable and a previously validated version of the software. It's, it's important to have experts on, on each uh, slice of the code or each sort of vector, but basically following the results closely. Um, so on page six, to address some of the challenges, uh, the first one, uh, which is sort of called here the non-physics or, or technical sources of, of non-reproducibility, which are listed here, as far as we know, so there are uh, differences expected related to the differences in, in math libraries or architectures and random seeds, and, and also those uh, more practical related to the different order of event processing or um, specifically when it comes to file up uh, overlay, which uh, just to the fact that we end up with different file up background files on different jobs um, in, the current, in the current way we do this. Um, but yeah, so this highlights one aspect of physics validation, which is that uh, we Really the goal that we have is to validate distributions and not uh, strictly figuring the, the event by event comparisons. Um, so on page seven, this then links to the other challenge, which uh, is to, um, that, that to understand the results, any changes to the distributions, um, it's hard when in fact there is a physical source of, of non reproducibility uh, For example, when we use uh, sort of a less precise output, as is the case for lossy compression, or when there's some approximation done in simulation, which leads to uh, what we'll call here the sort of equivalent but non-identical results, um, or, or when there's some change to the reconstruction algorithm uh, at low-level objects that, of course, propagate into higher-level ones. Um, so on all of this, it's important to uh, basically contextualize and have input from physics analysis. So the, the point here is that the, the the required precision levels, let's say, will vary from, from one to the other or not to the other. So it's, it's really critical information to when, when we need to decide that we're happy with the uh, that we're validating some, some changes in uh, distributions. Um, yeah, so again, this is just to point out, this is uh, why whenever we have release changes or major reprocessing campaigns, we, we typically have a, a selection of analysis from all physics groups that participate in this validation effort. Uh, okay, so some, some additional words on, on page eight about what some of the statistical uncertainties that we have. Um, so yeah, so the, there are residual statistical variations from, from using different seeds uh, throughout uh, full simulation, for example. This also comes up when, when making changes, some change to simulation by the different ordering uh, of particles. Um, and we also have the additional uncertainty when including pileup, as I mentioned before. And so one thing we've done and we're starting to do uh, uh, more intensively not right now is to address this or to understand this by generating samples or ensembles of, of, of um, samples with different random seeds as sort of illustrated in this plot. But yeah, so generally we're working to quantify this effect and other sources of, uh, sources of uncertainty by generating ensembles with, with different conditions and then factoring out, factoring, factorizing out as much as possible the, the sources of, um, of uncertainty. So on page nine, uh, just to have an example that, again, as I said before, where you can expect some differences from the different environments that we're running on, and um, that's particularly important for, for the new workflows with HPC, and, and, and that requires some technical validation of the Atlas framework. Uh, and I, as far as I know, this has been done at smaller scales, uh, but um, not really at the sort of physics validation level. Um, so we're planning to study this, for example, by generating an ensemble of, of samples, again, with different configurations, different workflows, with the goal of, of quantifying the expected variations here and the observables that we care about. But um, yeah, so another aspect is to define workflows that are uh, reproducible so that we can then use on a typical validation task and uh, 
for example, a simulation change in order to uh, basically facilitate conclusions, right? Uh, make sure that any effects that we're seeing um, the, the, the couple as much as possible from these other intrinsic, intrinsic sources of variation. So on page 10, uh, for a summary, just uh, so the last point is uh, that we're often asked about is, is how we can fully automate physics validation so that, um, so yeah, so if fully identical results are expected, that this is, this is clearer, so I think this is, this is possible. So for example, when we're going to be multi threading, we are doing a large scale validation and we do expect identical results um, if we can show for, for the other variations. Um, so I think what we have at the moment would, I think, be relatively easy to adapt to a fully um, automated process. But then um, that is probably also true for what we've called these equivalent result cases where the output may not be exactly identical. Um, so the difficulty here, as I said earlier, uh, would be to basically define uh, or to have a well-defined criteria for agreement as well as uh, the quantification of these non-effects. Uh, with non reproducibility and and yeah and then when when larger changes are expected it's 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 very difficult to fully automate this process and i think that, that can be um, for example when we're optimizing for full and full and fast simulation or some change in construction algorithms it's it's here it's it's really crucial to have inputs from from experts uh, that can easily be coupled and, and yeah and so the effects again need to be contextualized within the bubble of physics analysis so uh, that brings me to the summary. Um, in short, so obviously there's uh, continuous improvements and updates to the Atlas software that require careful validation, physics validation uh, has that particular role of ensuring that we catch both where wanted effects and, and also that we understand any major changes um, in the widest sense, right, in terms of the object and phase space that we're looking at. Um, and yes, uh, we're currently working toward, towards quantifying this expected level or variations that we, that we should expect namely from, from these uh, heterogeneous resources and other technical sources. Um, yeah, so that's, that's all for me. Okay, thank you. So, uh, are there some questions or comments for Ines? I have one, which is, um, th thank you first for this uh, uh, presentation of how it works, physics validation, and where are the changes. Uh, do you, in Atlas, are you aware of any specific challenges that have been identified with, let's say, the, 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 this validation applied to heterogeneous resources? It means um, uh, in the introduction of uh, accelerator like GPUs, something that may, um, impact the changes or have a particular change in terms of physics uh, validation? So I am not aware of a large scale validation to, start to study this effect specifically. Um, it's possible that there, there was some in the past that I, I am not aware of that. Ed? You... Yeah, if, if the question is, I mean, we, we don't really have any large scale tests on accelerators because we don't have large scale we don't use accelerators in large scale yet, but we've, we've seen differences even between AMD and Intel chips. So we've certainly seen differences coming from heterogeneous resources and we expect it to be much more if we start using, for example, ARM and, and accelerators and so on. Michele? So um, I understand that you said there are differences between uh, Intel AMD. You, you mean in terms of uh, validation of the, of the result or in terms of perf performances? Oh, sorry. I mean, I, I just meant in terms of the fact that we, you might naively expect to get binary identical results and we don't. Um, it, I don't didn't mean anything more sophisticated than that. Uh, If I can chime in, so uh, yes, in terms of results, because uh, uh, floating point differences um, have been seen in, in some of our validations. And uh, is this floating point differences uh, that we see in some of the CPU 
generations? Is it something that we expect to see between all the GPUs or are they using some quite of standard uh, plotting point uh, representation and manipulations? Uh, do you have experience on this? Only very little, but uh, um, um, from what everybody is saying, it should be a lot worse for GPUs than it is for, for the CPUs. Because uh, uh, what has been said in the past, uh, at least, was that uh, on the exact same GPU, on the exact same hardware, you can expect to see different binary re re results than running the exact same code twice, one after the other. Just because uh, if somebody else was running something at the same time uh, on the GPU, you could come out with slightly different results. Okay. Martin? So is it, is it fair to conclude that, um, let's say, this uh, new phase space right, of accelerators is not uh, unduly basically disturbing uh, the, the, the validation process because you already have to take into account so many other factors, right? Like library versions, compiler versions, and what have you, right? It makes the problem larger, right? But it's sort of like yet more, let's say, things to consider, right? To, to test against and so on. So maybe the matrix becomes bigger. Is that fair? We haven't yes. crossed that bridge yet. And that, but that's the hope, yes. Uh, I think we all hope this, that uh, just by adding a few more dimensions to, to this matrix, uh, we, we would be able to handle it. Let's hope. Ines, you wanted to comment? No, I just agree. I think that's 